Hi, I'm Valentin and you're watching On The Couch. For the first episode, I invited NLP Master Coach Sebastian Leblanc to talk with him about NLP, which is short for Neuro Linguistic Programming. I hope you'll enjoy the show. So, welcome to The Couch, Sebastian. Yeah. Thank nice you. To meet you. Yeah, very nice to meet you, Valentin. So, what can you tell me about NLP? What is NLP? Oh, eh, well, NLP is a modeling technology that is designed to make the difference between average people or average performance and outstanding performance in people's life. So, how's that, how does that work? So, what we believe in NLP is that anything that you can do anything that you can do very well. If I understand your strategy, if I know your belief, and I know your values, and I replicate the same, if I model you, basically I will be able to get the same outstanding result as you. It's a little bit like, you know, your mother's cooking. Um, is there anything specific that she was really good at? Perhaps uh, cookies or cake? So if she would teach me the recipe, how to do it specifically, and I replicate that, I would get the same delicious cookies. Okay, I understand. Like, what, what is your educational background? I heard you have only a high school diploma. Yes, time. yes, correct, correct. So in the beginning, when I became a, um, a speaker, an international speaker and a master coach, I was really... Um, well, shy about my education, which is only a high school education. But then once I start to coach people and I started to realize how much they actually have challenges in their life, I realized that my uh, streetwise education and my ability to learn and apply neuro-linguistic programming and to be an NLP trainer and uh, work and being graduated from Anthony Robbins was the tools and the skills that people needed to go from wherever they are in their life to where they want to be in the future. Okay, that's so, interesting. Uh, who are your clients then? Wide range of people. My youngest um, client is 12 years old, international student um, in, in sc international schools. And for example, they may have challenges with their homework, or they may have problems with their behavior at school, or they may have a phobia, um, for example, in a school bus or to do overnight trip with the school. And what I do is I utilize NLP techniques to help them overcome that. Um, my oldest student is 85 years old. And you know, that's quite challenging. In fact, it's a lot more challenging um, than a younger person because all their life they've been going through so much. So, and then anywhere between that. So we have CEOs of multinational company where I'm doing executive coaching for. We have uh, famous people, uh, celebrities, like Dr. Porntip. Not sure if you heard of Dr. It's no, the lady no, no, no. with all the funny hair. Ah, okay. And okay. she's uh, very famous in the forensic. Ah, okay. She came to one of our training and she said, Oh my God, <laughs> NLP should be teach at every level in the school system. Everyone should know NLP. And oh, okay, yeah, that's very interesting. So you cover a wide range then, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Managers, uh, parents, um, people who are depressed people who are on medication, people who are suicidal, people who are happy and want to be happier. So you can teach everyone then? Can. So, <laughs> I haven't found any prizes on your website. Yes. But I heard like seminars can reach up to 100,000 baht. Is, is that right? How uh, do you justify these high prices? Well, the, the, the price would be compared to what? Um, but our, our prices is actually a lot cheaper than 100,000 baht. Okay. In fact, they're more in the range of 50,000 baht for a seven-day certification program. Now, you're right, though, in saying that the same program in Switzerland or in England or in the U.S. or in Australia would 
actually be anywhere between 100 to 150,000 baht I'm for sorry, the same you, program. Were, you adjusted for purchasing power. Yes, correct, oh, okay. correct. Yeah. Because we believe in helping as many Thai people as possible. Oh. So we bring to Thailand international standard at local price. Okay, that's nice. I read a testimonial of a participant in your seminar, as you mentioned her right before, and I quote, she said, NLP is great because it is scientific and logical. Yes. Can you tell me what is so scientific about it? Okay, okay. I would think that, um, just to rephrase that, I would say that NLP is very logical. Some part of NLP is scientific not all part, not all part, which in fact is some of the complaint that some people will utilize to say that NLP may not give you the results that you want to because it's not scientifically proven. So it's very logical and some part of it is scientific. Now, as Anthony Robbins said, the world's greatest coach, when he does a seminar, there's 10,000 people in the audience, and he charged about a million US dollar um, per year for his coaching. And according to him, he said that the, the results in coaching, to be an outstanding coach, what you must focus on is results. Okay, I see. So, well, yeah, yeah. How do you explain, you say like, there is a scientific part, in it. Well, how can you explain the fact that NLP does not show up in science textbooks? Yes, because of that, uh, because of that part. So scientists, scientist, scientist, uh, for example, normal psychologist, um, what do they do is they do research and they research and they research and then they come up with a scientific proof of something and then they utilize that in psychology or psychiatry, which is their process, which is great for traditional psychology. Now, in NLP, we believe in results. We are outcome-oriented. And sometimes, sometime when you look at the results, when you look at outcome, that is the proof that it's working. So in that context, in terms of results, I am 100% certain that NLP is designed to get you results and outcome. Okay. Yes. yes. Uh, Carl Sagan, I don't know if you know him, he's a famous astronomer, American. Okay. Uh, he once said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So where yes. is your evidence? Yeah, very, good very good point. I, I totally agree with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the evidence. The proof is in the pudding um, comes from our clients and that's the great thing when I am in front of a client and the client says Sebastian and they're looking into my eyes and they say I've tried everything I went to a psychologist I went to a psychiatrist I went to see coaches it's nothing nothing has worked you're my last chance so it's mostly like anecdotal evidence it's you results. Yeah, absolutely. What people tell to other people that it worked. Well, that that is the benefits of it. That's the benefit. But you see, when I look at that person in the eyes and they say, you've changed my life, thank you very much. And so, they don't ask the money back, then I know I've done an outstanding so you job. Base, you base uh, the results on the opinion of the people you yeah. get? Yes. Oh, okay. So alien abduction is also supported by anecdotal evidence and many books have been written about it, right? Yeah. So what do you think that uh, claims of NLP and alien abduction are like equally valid since they are based on the same kind of evidence? Alien abduction. Abduction. Wow. That's, uh, can you explain what you mean by that? Yeah, you know, the, the people who tell that uh, Aliens took them to their spaceship and operated them in their labs mm -hmm. and get mm -hmm. them back to Earth. So uh -huh. many people claim that happened to them. Yeah. So it's also like the people tell other yeah. people that this happened to them. Why would you trust them, right? Well, I think that in NLP we have a concept called the NLP model of communication. 
in the NLP model of communication, we teach that people delete information naturally, they distort information, and then they generalize. So what does that mean? It means that people have many cognitive biases. Exactly, exactly, correct. So these are more belief and uh, I would say that uh, NLP has nothing to do with, uh, with aliens. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you may look like an alien doing NLP with someone, but uh, I would say it's pretty different. Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So on your website, uh, you promise success and happiness. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what is your definition of happiness? Oh, very good, very good. So my definition of happiness is that it's a state. See, happiness is not something you aim for, it's not something you look for, it's not something that can be found. It's something that can be lived. So happiness is a state. So the moment that you're able to detach yourself from everything that you're surrounded, including your suit, your watch, your income, your job, the people that you're surrounded by, the goal, the ambition, and you're able to detach yourself from that, then you can be truly happy. And that leads to be able to create and attract whatever you want into your life. Okay. Uh, if I understand it correctly, NLP suggests that you can imitate the, the behavior of successful people to be successful yourself. Yes, How correct. How does that work? By modeling. By modeling. So what do we mean by mo modeling? Uh, just take the example of America and Japan. Uh, after the Second World War, Japan was totally destructed. They were nothing. The, the, the land was completely gone after the atomic uh, bomb. Yeah. So the Japanese thought, well, okay, we need to rebuild our country. So how are we going to do it? Well, let's model America. So they started to use NLP by modeling America. But they thought a little bit different. They thought, hmm, let's model America and see if we can make it even better. And then what happened is many, many centuries, well, many, many decades ago, made in Japan, was a perception of very low quality. And then they got better, and they got better, and they got better. Today, Made in Japan has a very, very good reputation. Okay. So the way to do that is to look at people's strategy, belief, and values. But the problem is like, there are, I guess there are many people who have the same characteristics as successful people, but yes. they still fail. Yes, so, yes. But these are the people who don't show up in the biographies, right? Because no publisher would publish their story, right? C correct. So what happened to them? Well, this is what's interesting about my work, because I've been doing a full-time trainer, a full-time coach in NLP. And what I realize, what I realize is that it's people's ego. So that's People their own ego. fault then? Well, I wouldn't say their own fault. It's their own um, inability to take their ego and kind of leave it outside the door. And to just appreciate the concept of modeling. Because you see, in order to model someone exactly, you need to be ego-free. And people have a very difficult time with that. You see? Yeah, and you try to free them from their ego. Well, I, no, 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 I don't try to free them from their ego because that's, um, that's a choice that they have to make. But I can just give you a quick example. Because I only had an education in high school, because I only had an education in high school, I learned NLP and become an NLP trainer and an NLP coach, and a really good one. Because I always had a belief that well, maybe I'm not as intelligent as Tony Robbins. Maybe I'm not as intelligent as a successful CEO. What can I learn? What can I learn from that person? What can I learn from my teacher? What can I learn from NLP? And I've always had that belief that you should involve and immerse yourself in your learnings. Okay. Um, a number of studies show that many successful people show characteristics similar to sociopaths. 
So, <laughs> would you encourage to imitate a sociopath to get successful? Right, right. I heard, um, I heard from someone who told me that um, uh, the Steve Job, Steve Job had a very interesting character. Did you know that when he would go to a board meeting, he wouldn't take shower. No, I don't know, but yeah, he it sounds would, weird to me. Yeah, yeah, he wouldn't take shower. It would smell really bad. And the rest of the board of the meeting um, had to say to him, Steve, go take a shower and come back. <laughs> so, That's yeah, I would agree. I, I, would, I, would, I would agree with that. That's probably true. I, I found that a lot of successful people are outside, you know, thinking. They think outside the box and they can be seen as different. Now, in NLP, though, the difference between NLP and traditional psychology or psychiatry is that we deal with normal people. So if the person has a mental illness or is a sociopath, then these are not the type of clients that I have or the types of people that I would deal with. If I find that someone is a soci sociopath, I would refer them to a medical doctor. Okay. We only deal with normal people. Okay, yeah. very nice. Yeah. Okay, it's worth, very nice to talk to you, Sebastian. Yeah, Thank great. You Thank you very much, much for the outstanding questions. Yeah, great. Well, that was interesting. Are you already convinced? Personally, I remain skeptical about the effectiveness of NLP. But I would like to invite you to share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next episode of On the Couch.